All right, um, we say good evening and welcome to the Body of Christ Church Presents. Another live class here being broadcasted live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, as well as our podcast channel on uh, Spreaker.com. Uh, and as usual, before we get into the uh, discussion of the evening here, We'll just give out a little bit of introduction um, uh, on our church. So to start out with, we have a website that you can visit, which is uh, thebocc.com. You can go on that website and um, check out many different you know, articles that we have on there and different learning resources and stuff like that. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash the BOCC. And our main YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash the BOCC one. And that's the number one. And then our other YouTube channels are the BOCC one zero zero and then the BOCC two. And that's the number two. And then on Twitter, it's at the BOCC. And also, we just launched a new website. It's like a little link tree thing there that pretty much lists all of our um, different uh, outlets that we have on the internet. So to get that, you just go to link, L-I-N-K dot T-R-E-E uh, dot com uh, forward slash the B-O-C-C. And then that will bring up, you know, all our different um, learning resources and stuff like that that we have out there on the uh, Internet. Uh, our contact phone number, if you want to get in touch with us, it's um, 888-971-2622. Again, 888-971-2622. And if you prefer to email us, our email address is info at the com. All right, so with all of that being said, we will get into the topic here of the evening, which is getting right with the Lord, all right? So getting right with the Lord, all right? So one of the things, um, you know, that happens at times is people will... You know, they'll hear the word, whether it be through uh, our church, another church, whether it be they came to our church for a while or another church or what have you, or just heard the word and, you know, they started uh, doing it for a while. But then, you know, because of their own lust and then also the enemy, Satan and his demons, um, those things come in and then uh, the person, you know, just fell behind and just stop doing what they know uh, to be right, okay? And at some point, they'll come back to their senses and be like, okay, you know, I did know uh, some things and um, that were right, but I just went off from that, started living wickedly, started doing a lot of evil, wicked things. Um, is there a way uh, that I can get back to the Lord, you know, to start living right in His sight? You know, will He accept me, Okay. And the answer to that is yes, as long as you're living and breathing. He didn't take you out the earth. Okay, the answer to that is yes, and we're going to go through uh, those scriptures. Okay, so again, uh, getting right with the Lord. Okay, that's the topic that we want to talk about tonight. Okay, so what I want to start out with is in the book of Job chapter 33. So let's go there. Let me share my screen. So Job chapter 33. And I want you to read from verse 27 through verse 30. You said 27 through 30? Yes. Job 3 and 27. No, no, 33 and 27. Okay, I got me. I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. 33:27. Okay. He looked upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see light. Lo, all these things work it 
God often with man to bring back his soul from the pit and to enlighten with the light of living. Okay. So it says he, meaning the most high God, right? Looketh upon men. So he sits in the heaven of heavens, right? And he's looking on men. He's looking on all of us, mankind. And if any say, so if any man says, you know what? I have sinned. So you're acknowledging that, you know what, man, I messed up. I sinned and I perverted that which was right. Man, I, t I totally went against what God told me to do, right? And it profiteth me not. Look at me now. You know, since I've, I've turned into to sin and start doing all these wicked things, it didn't profit me anything and it made me worse off. Right. So he looketh upon people. And if people are saying that, it says he will deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. So the most high God is so merciful. Right. That when you acknowledge your sin and, and you're like, man, you know what? All, all those wicked things that I did, man, it didn't profit me anything. The most high said he's going to deliver such a person's soul from going into the pit, meaning death and hell, and his life shall see the light. You're going to see Christ. That's that's who that light is, right? It says, lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man. So God oftentimes does this with people because he knows how we are. He knows that uh, what's in us is no good thing, like Paul says, Right? We were born with that wicked heart and that wicked imagination, right? So it says, all these things work of God oftentimes with man, right? To bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. So there you go. That's your chance, right? As long as you're in the land of the living, you have a chance. To bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living, it's about acknowledging what you did wrong, right? And confessing that to the Most High God, right? And say, look, it didn't profit me and ask him for mercy and forgiveness and start doing what's right. That's what it's all about. All right. Did you want to say anything on that, brother? Oh, I'm good, bro. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms 86. And let's see here. So... Psalms chapter 86 and then read verse 15. Psalms 86, 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Okay. So David is saying here, look, thou, O Lord, you are a God, you are a power, right? That's full of compassion and gracious, right? Long suffering with all the foolishness that we do, all the sins that we commit and plenteous in mercy and truth, right? But you know what the enemy does? The enemy does this. He comes and he tells us the complete opposite of this. Right? And I, even I myself have, um, this is a trick that he comes with me all the time with. Right? Oh, God's not going to forgive you. Oh, you know, this, that, and the other, so on and so forth. Right? But it, the scriptures is telling us that he's a God full of compassion. Full you know when something is full? It's like you have a glass of water and it's full. It's not even half full, but full all the way to the brim, right? So our God is full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth, right? That's the power that we're serving. But Satan would have us think otherwise. Mm -hmm. No, he's going to kill you. No, he's going to destroy you. Right? He pulls that trick on us all, me included. 
He pulls that trick on us all the time. And sometimes it'd be over, not saying that, you know, um, um, downplaying sin or whatever, but even I know with me myself, it'd be some, sometimes some real petty foolishness. But he comes into my head with, you know, all this other foolishness, right? But the scriptures is telling us that God is full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. It's about, you know, acknowledging what we've done wrong and then not doing it again. That's what it's about. And the Lord, it says he's full of compassion and grace. He'll forgive us. That's what the scriptures are saying. But again, Satan comes and whispers in our ears the exact opposite of this. All right. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah I'll say this, bro, because like that's, that's stemming from like what you just came from, because it's the guilt and the shame that Satan try to get us in. Like, that's why if we do fall back into sin and do something wrong, a lot of times guilt and shame will keep us separate. Because the scripture said it is your sins that separates you from God. And, and Satan knows that. That's why he wants you to fall back into your sins. But we're not to, like the scripture says too as well, we're not supposed to let uh, continue in sin that grace may abound. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of times Satan like to come and then even in our state where he, he tempts us with our weaknesses. And a lot of times we get prey and fall into that. And then those spirits will attach to us like doubt, disbelief, uh, depression and all those things. Satan try to ride you with those things and that way to keep you separated from God. But the scripture says, as long, like the brother was saying, as long as you live in there, it's hope. Because in, uh, also, uh, I think it is the Psalms where it says, that's in Ecclesiastes, as long as you're connected to the living, there is hope. It says a living dog is better than a dead lion. For as long as you're connected to the living, there is hope. But to acknowledge your ways of sin, that's what you got to acknowledge first and then turn from that and don't let the father of lies deceive you and thinking that the heavenly father will not uh, grant you mercy from that. So that's it, bro. Exactly, bro. Good. All right. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Uh, chapter 18. Okay. So let's see here. Ezekiel chapter 18 and then I want you to read verse 32 Ezekiel 18 and verse 32 says for I have no pleasure in the death of him that died says the Lord God wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Okay, check this out, right? A lot of people think, and again, it's that it's one of the trick, many tricks of the devil. But a lot of people think that the Most High has pleasure in putting people to death, right? Look at this. It says, and this is the Most High talking, right? For I have no pleasure, none, none. In the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. He's always given us a chance to get it right. So that he doesn't have to put us to death. That's the thing. That's why I keep we keep saying this. Like, look, as long as you're alive, you have a chance to get it right. Because it says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. That's what he wants. Right? He wants us to live and not die. He he doesn't have any pleasure in that. And that's the thing, because even like with us, even as us human beings, we uh, categorize sins. We put certain sins in one category thinking that, you know, they're worse off than another one, so on and so forth. Right? And... And listen, I, I believe I said the story before, but I'm going to say it again, right? Um, I used to be one of those ones where I used to look at people. I used to be like pedophiles and all that, bro. And I used to look at it. I'm like, yo, man, I'm like, some of them just do this stuff, bro. 
just over and 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 over again. And they just keep living on, bro. They just continue living. Right? Some of these pastors, same thing. They do a whole bunch of wickedness. Just keep living, bro. And it's like nothing is uh, happening um, uh, to them. Right? Now, check this out, right? Eddie Long. Remember him? Remember the that mega pastor? Okay, you remember some of the allegations that he was caught up in, right? Um, molesting boys and all that. So, you know, you remember when he passed away a couple years ago, right? Yep. So, when he passed away, bro, uh, they had an article on Yahoo that, you know, they wrote up or whatever. Oh, Pastor Eddie Long, pastor of Mega Church, you know, passed away and this and that and the other, right? So, I'm reading the article and then I scroll down to the comments, right? Bro, I'm thinking that I'm going to be reading a lot of people lamenting him because he was a popular preacher, well-loved, at least so I thought, right, by a lot of people. So I'm thinking that I'm going to be reading a lot of comments with people lamenting him. Oh, my God, you know, I miss him, RIP, blah, 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 this and that, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, no joke. No joke, right? There were a lot of comments on the article. Almost Every single one went something like this. Now I believe that there's a God because he's taken a wicked man out of the earth. Mm. Now I believe in God because he's put this man to death. This man has done a lot of wickedness to me and other people I know, this and that. And these are like men and stuff, accusing him and stuff. But a lot of people were saying now I believe that there is a God because he has taken a wicked man out the earth. And bro, I'm going to tell you, it was that moment right, right there where that scripture that we just read in Ezekiel came to mind. And it answered the question that I always had is, why does God allow certain people just to keep living just and they keep doing all this wicked stuff even the pedophilia stuff mm -hmm. why does that happen and you know why that happens because of that scripture that we just read he has no pleasure in the death of him that dieth it didn't say uh, except a pedophilia or a murderer or a rapist it didn't say any of those things in, in anybody so he wants people no matter how we categorize sins he wants people to change. That's what he wants. And all the scriptures that we read so far about him, full, his he's full of compassion and long suffering. That's how he is. He's not like us. Like we categorize sins, right? This sin is greater than that sin, but not him. In his eyes, it's all the same. The same mouth said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit fornication. So on and so on. It's the same mouth that said those words, all those words. Right. So with him, there's no categorization. Right. But the point is, no matter how wicked a person is or how we view them or what wickedness they did, the Lord wants all of us to change our ways and to live right in his sight. That's what the Lord God wants. All right. Did you want to say anything on that? Nah, you covered it, bro. Cause it, okay. it's not too much. It's like, cause like that is because like I, I I will say this though, but cause like a lot of times too, like even like when you use the example of Eddie Long, like when you're living in that world of sin, Satan, the enemy does want you to, to deceive as many as people and destroy and hurt as many as people on the same side. Like, same like you say, like the Heavenly Father wants us to um, repent. And refrain from that because we even spoke about this last week about um, how why the, the coming of the Lord why it's taking so long because he have no pleasure in the death of the wicked he even wicked wicked man he he has no pleasure in that but even when it gets to like a lot of times when we see like how Satan will try to destroy people that are righteous 
And then a lot of times righteous people get end up getting taken out real fast. Uh, and it's it's just everything can be so confusing. And everything is a reason why this and why that happened. And a lot of times everything can't be answered. Why this happened like that or why that happened like that. People be looking to men of God like, can you answer this? And some things be too deep for men of God to even answer. Like, I, I don't know why the Heavenly Father uh, choose to do that. But once you learn about the Heavenly Father and you, you you get a better understanding and you begin to see that why certain things does take place, this, that, and the other, and it's just a constant thing. Because like once you learn the ways of the enemy and the ways of the Heavenly Father, you can see on both sides how the spiritual realm works. But a lot of people, they upset with the Heavenly Father and they just, they'll leave Satan out. Satan just get totally anything that happened people just be like why you let that happen god and you you forget all about satan did this the scriptures also say satan come to kill steal and destroy so now it said kill so now how does satan get to kill is when we're operating in sin and some sins are worthy of death like people don't understand and know that like it's sins that are worthy of death even when you deal with the old testament how like it was some sins that the, the congregation, the people stoned you and killed you for these sins. These were sins that are worthy of death. So if you get caught in that arena and Satan have license to destroy you, then he best believe he's going to take you out. Especially when you like straddling the fence and you're playing around because when you start dealing with Eddie Long and all this stuff, them, them men were not, they were not men of God because even if you go back in just the history and know what these people affiliated with, they really wasn't dealing with God. That's another way Satan gets in. Satan is in the church, as you know. Like a lot of churches that you think they're churches is just houses of Satan, just dens of thieves and wickedness in those churches because they're not dealing with the Heavenly Father in Christ. So these are churches that are established and set up by demonic forces, Satan and, and the wicked. And these churches will thrive and they bring people in to keep them lost and separated from God. And the more people that come in is the more people that can spread out this, this influence of this righteousness that's not righteousness, but it's actually wickedness, but it's being taught to deceive. Because the scripture says Satan will what? Deceive the whole world. So we got to understand and know that it's, 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 it can be very complicated and confusing. Just like what this brother was saying, like, it's been times when he, it's been times when I, you'll be looking at the most high, like, most high, what the, like, what is going on? But when you take the time and you keep yourself humble and you, like the scripture said, lean not to thy own understanding. When you start leaning to your own understanding and trying to find out things your own self, that's when the enemy can come in and deceive you. But you got to send up prayers and be patient and be still and wait and let things take a process. And the Heavenly Father will show you what it is. And then you can continue on in this path. So that's it, bro. Exactly, bro. Good. All right. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms 103. All right. And let's see here. So Psalms 103. And read verse eight. You said uh, 103. 101. I'll tell you that. Okay, 101. And... No, no, 103. 103. 103. Okay. So yeah, and eight. Yeah. Uh -huh. eight. Psalms 103 and verse eight. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Okay, so here it is again, right? It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious. Right. Again, Satan tells us the opposite. And again, like the brother said, there's a balance to everything. And I like the fact that the brother brought in, you know, um, because it was said that scripture of grace or whatever. Don't abuse it, you know, so on and so forth. So, yeah, don't abuse it because the most I God is not one to be mocked. OK, like the scriptures tell us. Right. But getting back to the point here, it says the Lord is merciful and gracious. Right slow to anger and plenteous in mercy, right? If we only run back to him and confess, listen, I did that which was wrong and it didn't profit me. 
Most I, through your only begotten son, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Right? He will show you mercy. Again, as long as you're alive and breathing, that's the mercy right there. He didn't take you out the earth. He's, he didn't say, look, I'm done with you. Right? Uh, there's another scripture that says, um, when you're dead, he's not even think he's not he's not thinking about the dead. He's just thinking and looking at the ones that are alive in his eyes. So once you're dead and gone, that's it. But once you're alive, yes, you still have a chance, right? So the Lord is merciful and gracious, right? Merciful and gracious, just full of mercy and very gracious. Slow to anger, right? That's why people can do wickedness over and over again. And the Lord doesn't strike them down and kill them right then and there. Because he's slow to anger. He's not like us, right? Some of us uh, get angry at the drop of a dime. That's not him, right? He's slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. That's the God that we serve, right? So get in right with the Lord. Just know these things. Keep these things in mind, right? And repent uh, from your sins and get back right with the Lord, okay? All right. So did you want to say anything on that before we move on or no? No, I'm good. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 9 and let's look at something here that Christ uh, said so Luke chapter 9 and read verse 56 Luke 9 and verse 56 says for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. And they went to another village. Okay, so Christ did not come to destroy people's lives, right? But what? He came to save them, right? To save them, right? So again, as long as you're you know, alive, still breathing, guess what? Christ, our advocate, is there for you. Because he didn't come to destroy men's lives. That's the second time that he come. He's going to put the wicked to death. But this, this, this first time around that he came, it says he came to save them. That's why Christ came. The son of man came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Because even when you read this in context, um, they went to a place and they didn't receive him. And the disciples was like, okay, should we command that fire come down from heaven and destroy them? And that's when Christ made the statement. He was like, look, I didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So even though they rejected him and didn't accept him, he was like, no, I didn't come for that. Because they might get it right at another time. Who knows? I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I came to save them. Right? So again, same thing with you out there listening. Right? That's, this is the reason why Christ came. You know, if you uh, heard the word or whatever before and you were doing what's right, you messed up and now you're acknowledging your sins. OK, keep this in mind, too. Christ came to save men's lives. So, again, confess your sins and ask for forgiveness uh, to the Heavenly Father through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. All right. So um, anything on that or no? Yeah, I'll say something on that, bro. All right. It's like... Um... That, like you said, that's the that's the mercy of the Heavenly Father. And the Heavenly Father and Christ know and understand the nature of the flesh. Because like I always say, Galatians 5. Because if you sow to the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. And the Heavenly Father know and understand that if we live out of the flesh and the desires of the flesh, they're going to overtake us. And a lot of our flesh, we've been living in our flesh for so long that the desires and lust and the temptations, it is very challenging. It's like we always be open and honest and be like, listen, if you if you run into a person that's trying to deal with this Bible and say that they don't have any problems with sin or lust or anything, they're lying. Because that's that's what it is. We're in this carnal flesh. It's a spirit and a soul within us, and it's a flesh. And the flesh is full of sin and corruption. And see, that was the whole thing when you take it back to the beginning. 
That's what Satan knew that would happen if he get man to sin. Because he told Eve, you should, should not surely die. But he knew if he gets you to transgress the heavenly father's law, statutes, and commandments, and you sow unto this flesh, the flesh is going to bring forth nothing but death. Because once you begin to feed it, because like I said, once you go into Galatians 5 and you read about the works of the flesh and you feed that to your flesh, it's a hard thing to change. And it's always a great example to use an addiction. Like any type of addiction that a person has, they know how hard it is to come away from it. See, a lot of people think like, it's people that's addicted to food. Or people that's overweight. Anybody that know that they went from a, a real heavy set person to a slim person, it was work. That's the same thing in the spirit. Because once you start learning what sin truly is, you like, oh my God, I got to do, I, what the heck? That's why a lot of people cannot endure. The scriptures say this is a strat and narrow path. I Meaning it's a way that you have to walk to bring the flesh under subjection to the heavenly father. So that's why when Christ came on the scene, he's like, he ain't come here to destroy. Because if he didn't have to come, if he was going to do that, he could have just stayed in the heavenly realm and just destroyed earth as it is. But he came down in the flesh in this sinful flesh, the very flesh that we're in, and walk this walk as we do. The same temptations, the same lust, the same desires, everything. The scripture said Christ was tempted in all points. Christ had problems with everything that you could think of. All the works of the flesh came upon him, but he overcame and he obeyed. And that's what we have to do. We have to obey the word of the heavenly father. And I'm going to jump back to like where we came to, uh, from Psalms when it says um, in Psalms 103. And I'm going to read down because we ain't going to read down. We're going to no, read verse, yeah, verse 9 and 10 okay, and even 11 because that's pretty good. Because like a lot of times this like when we when we come to serve the Lord, the scripture says we got to prepare ourselves for temptation. And a lot of people, like I said earlier, we fall into those lusts and desires and we think that, that Satan try to deceive us and think that there's no room for repentance for the heavenly father. But verse nine says, I can read it for you, bro. Go ahead, bro. All right. So uh, Psalms 103 verse nine, he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Mm -hmm. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. And see, that is the mercy. That's mm -hmm. what the heavenly father would do. Because like what I was saying, like he understands and know this flesh and the sin that we're in. And it's, it's a struggle. It's a battle. And it's something that we have to pray. That's why the Lord said you gotta you gotta constantly read, you gotta pray, you gotta believe in the Heavenly Father, and you got to do. It got to be repetition. So now it says he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. See, now the, the chide is dealing with punishment. The Lord will punish us according to it. that's what a good father would do, a good parent. Like we will punish our children for what they did wrong. But see, a lot of times, this is where a lot of people fall off the horse. When the Lord begins to punish them, they upset and angry, and then they take they take the punishment wrong, and then they separate themselves from God, not knowing that that's the mercy and the love. Because it's like when you read on, it says he won't keep his anger forever because he know and understand that a lot of times we are led into sin by the enemy and by the works of the flesh by not ruling and controlling our flesh. He says he had not dealt with us after our sins. Because if he did, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be over here talking right now. He dealt with us according to our sins. Because our sins, the script, all sins is worthy. Like the, the, the script, like I said, sin, the wages of sin is death. Period. Like, but the Heavenly Father, he didn't deal with us according to that. He showed the mercy and love. It says, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. It says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. So now that's the key, the fear. The fear is the reverence and respect. When we learn of the Heavenly Father, we fear him. And when he know and understand that we have fear and we make mistakes, 
he will separate the things that we do. Like this says, so as, he, as far as the heavens is above the earth, he will separate all our wickedness and iniquity from us as long as we respect and do what's right and get it right and keep striving and going. And that's the, what the Heavenly Father will do for us. And that's it, bro. Okay, good, bro. All right, so that scripture you just quoted is actually the next scripture that we I have written down here. So go to the book of Romans, um, chapter six. Okay, so let's see here. So Romans chapter six, and then uh, I want you to read verse 23. So I'm going to just pull this up. Romans six twenty three. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ me." Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, so it says the wages, so the payback, right? That's the wages it's talking about of sin is death, right? But, and if you think about this, going into all the scriptures that we just read about the Most High being long-suffering, full of compassion, that this means that then we all should be dead, right? Because we're all sinners in the eyes of God. It says, for the wages of sin is death. So why is the planet still inhabited by people? You know why? The second uh, part. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why that is. He sent Christ to die for our sins. So it's a gift that he gave to us to die for our sins so that we can get it right. To come, be that perfect sacrifice, and to also live a righteous life and show us how we ought to live and how we can accomplish the same thing as well, right? That's why that is. So the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, right? So we have to recognize and understand that gift that was given to all of us, right? Because, again, we all should be dead. The planet should only have animals on it and plants and stuff like that but that's not the case we're still here okay all right you want to say anything on that or no no i'm good bro all right let's go to the book of isaiah chapter 55 okay and we're gonna see here so let's see isaiah chapter 55 And I want you to read verse 6 and verse 7. Isaiah 55, 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Okay, so it says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. So repent from our sins, right? Fear the most high God, right? Have that reverence towards him. Seek to do what's right. Study your Bible, right? Read it. Read about our Lord and Savior. Pray to the Most High Christ. Ask Him, you know, for forgiveness. Ask Him to help you to overcome your weaknesses, right? So that you can walk upright in His sight. That's you seeking the Lord, right? So seek Him while He may be found, because uh, we could go at any moment, right? And in the spirit world, He's not to be found, right? So seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Now is the time to do this. Right? Then it says, let the wicked forsake his way. So all the wickedness that you've done and that we've done, forsake it, meaning leave it alone. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. So it starts with our thoughts. All the sins that we commit, it starts in our mind with that thought. So... What? Learn to develop that righteous mind. And how you do that? You do that by uh, um, 
for lack of a better word, engrossing yourself in the word and Jesus Christ. You study, you meditate continually, right? So you, you, you develop that right mind to uh, offend less, as the scripture says, to not go into sin, right? Because now your, your mind is right. Now your mind is focused on what the scripture says. Now your mind is focused on when you go out, you know, like, you know what, man, if that was Christ, Christ wouldn't be doing that, right? Because you've, you've read about him, you, um, you see his examples, you see that he's all about righteousness, so on and so forth, right? So let, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. So let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. It says, and let him return unto the Lord, right? So return unto the Lord, put away those sins, Right and come back to the Lord, and He will have mercy upon him. Right and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. Again, that little voice in your head. Oh, God's not going to forgive you. Now, nah, look, all that stuff you did. Nah, God's not going to forgive you. Man, you must be crazy. That thought is the devil. It's not you. It's not you talking in your head or to yourself. That's the devil. That's how the devil comes at all of us. He doesn't appear to us most of the time. And even if he do, even when he does, we don't know that it's him. But he doesn't appear to us like, you know, and start talking to us. Right? And like I said, if and when he does that, we, we're not going to know that, hey, you're the devil. Right? A lot of times it's in our minds. With what we think is us talking to ourselves, but it's not. So this is a scripture to keep in mind that he's full of mercy and he will abundantly pardon. We just have to forsake uh, those sins and, and start living right and developing that righteous mind because that's where everything starts. It's having that right mind, man. It's meditating continually and just having that right mind towards the Lord. All right. You want to say anything on that? Yeah, I was going a little bit more on the thoughts because the, them thoughts, like I said, in the unrighteous man, his thoughts, his all thoughts is all sinful nature. Because before you come to the Lord, people know you, your thoughts and you, the way you think and what you plan to do. It a lot of it was sinful. You you plan out the things that you was going to do and all the things that you think about. Them are the things that we have to forsake. Because like the scripture said, when I come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptations. For the very things that you were used to doing, all those thoughts and those, like the brother said, Satan is going to come in with and try to remind you and plant these thoughts back into your head of your old nature. And that's why a lot of people, they get, they come to serve the Lord, then a lot of their temptations and lusts come back. And then like the brother also said about praying, like you got to pray to the heavenly father and a lot of people I, I i remember this guy he was he said like <laughs> he was like he prayed but he don't really pray because he was like that and he and he kind of just really just disrespected him because he's like that man too busy like like <laughs> Wow, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> like the most I to be because see people just imagine the heavenly father like he's just so busy and he just he's it's just so much going on and it, it's just too much going on for him <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy but, yeah that's crazy but that's not listen the most high is all powerful, almighty, all in control. You may think he's not in control, but he, he's in control. But see, that's the enemy that's mm -hmm. going to keep you thinking that is the most high too busy to listen to your prayer. So these are the these are the tactics and the schemes of the devil and how he make don't get caught up in Hollywood what you see on TV, what you think that God is thinking. Because um Shoot, you can read on. I, I'm glad to say he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways or your ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than yours, I mean, than your thoughts. So we have to understand and know that think about this, man. We, you're dealing with a being the most high that is existing itself. You don't even get to think, well, where did the most high, bro? I, I 
I almost, I, I, I promise you, I almost, my mind almost like went crazy trying to think of what the most high is. You can't figure it out, so don't even worry about it. He's existing himself. He's he's always, have, always, will be, never in. Mm-hmm. So we can't even compare to what the most high is. So when we try to compare ourselves and use our mind to think that we can understand him, we can't. We have to follow what he says. And the closer, and the, like I always say, we draw nigh to him, he's going to draw nigh to us. And he, the spirit of the Heavenly Father, his Holy Spirit will give you the understanding as much as you desire. Mm-hmm. So, but you have to keep that up. You have to pray. And you have to, like I said, forsake your thoughts. The thoughts is talking, it's just, it's sin. Because it, your regular thoughts, if they're not sinful, the most is not talking about that. If you, you got good thoughts and things you want to do is, is, is lawful, things are right. No, it's talking about sinful nature. You got to forsake that. Because if you don't, it's going to constantly keep you in the loop and keep you in sin. And the, and the enemy is going to always be able to sway you and along with your flesh to break the Heavenly Father's commandments. And then we'll find ourselves outside of the grace of the Most High. So that's it, brother. Exactly. No, good points, bro. I want to um, I want to touch back. I want to say two things in regards to what you just said. Because the, the part with, oh, that man too busy and this and that. It's just crazy how the devil be coming at us, bro, because I tell you, like, okay, so that's his trick with someone who doesn't necessarily follow the scriptures and know the most high, right? So so someone like myself who knows the scriptures, one of the ways that he comes at me, like, when I get done praying, is like, okay, you know, God didn't even hear that, right? <laughs> that's, that's the foolishness. I, and that happens a lot with me. Like immediately after I get done praying, you know, God didn't even hear that. <laughs> like, yo, that's crazy. But see, but so here's the thing. When you read the scriptures, right? The scriptures tell us, uh, and I don't want to get too deep with it, but the scriptures tells us that the Most High has angels on this earth. In some places of the scriptures, it refers to them as the eyes of the Lord. They're really angels and i think there's like six or seven of them or whatever but they roam the earth they go to and fro and then report back to the heavenly father there's one particular one i know it might be more than one but i know there's one particular one raphael it says that takes the prayers right of the saints back to the heavenly father right so we know these things to be true right because the angel said that right so when those thoughts come in like, oh, you know, that man too busy. No, just know that that's the devil. Because again, and this is important to know, because again, the, what we're focusing on for people, you know, that have maybe messed up or whatever and trying to get back to the Lord. We know that these are some of the tricks that Satan is going to come with. And again, it's, it's going to come like your own thoughts, but they're not. OK, one of the other things I wanted to say also is um, you said something really important a while ago that even when people come into um the doctrine or whatever, you know, they'd be thinking about, you know, the sins that they committed and this and that and the other. And then, the you know, the devil be coming in. Oh, you know, you're not going to make it or this and that and the other. And even to this day, there's still a lot of people in our church that suffer with that from time to time. Right. But I never forget this, bro. This wasn't that long ago, maybe about two, three months ago. I remember, um, I think it was a girl. She wrote a comment on, um, on uh online it was it was like uh i forgot it was some um bible quotation stuff like some inspirational stuff or whatever um that some people were putting out and then you know people were making comments and stuff like that so anyway so the girl she wrote a good comment and i like i liked it a lot right she said whenever the devil comes to remind you of your past remind him of his future I was like, you know, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. That that's very clever. I like that because that's true. What's his future, bro? The lake of fire. Thank you. What's our future if we repent? Everlasting life. Thank you. 
So when he comes with that madness, oh man, you messed up. You did this, you, man. No, Satan, get the hell away from me because your future is in the lake of fire. That's not my future if I'm doing what all the scriptures that we just read, uh, confessing, forsaking our thoughts and all that, asking the most High for forgiveness, mercy, and every day of our lives doing our best to offend less and less. That's not my future. Right. So these are the things that we have to keep in mind because this is how the enemy comes at us. Right. And he's very aggressive and relentless. That's the thing with him, man. Very relentless. Right. So these are the things that we got to keep in mind. All right. Let's yeah, let me, cause yeah. like, and that's the great hatred that the enemy has for us because we have that mercy and grace, even though we make mistakes and they do not. Mm -hmm. That's the great hatred because they were, Satan, the demonic forces that fell with him, they were eternal beings created by Christ, the most high, perfect. And they went outside. Because, like, listen and understand, even as us, when the scripture said, the greater I am, the more I humble thyself. Even when we begin to grow and the closer we get to the most high, you need to be careful with what you do. Because even like Moses, Moses was the meekest man on the earth. And a lot of people be looking at Moses made a, a slight mistake and the most have punished him greatly because he was close to the most high. And he knew Moses knew and understand. So the more you know and understand, yes, the punishment in the in the uh in the um judgment for sin is greater because the Lord the the Lord know. So now the most high know. So Satan he was a high, they say a high archangel, and all of the, the entities that fell with them, these were heavenly beings. This is before earth and all of itself, and they sin entered into the hearts of Satan, and he said, and they would cast out no forgiveness. But now, us down here is different. Man, we have, we can make mistakes. Not saying that we just practice sin. But we have, we, we can fall. The scripture says, though a just man falls seven times, the Lord will lift him right back up. And the, Satan hate that. So he, that's why he goes so hard to destroy you and your mind and make you, and try to separate you from God and make you think God is wicked and evil. But he is the wicked and evil one because he fell from grace and there is no mercy and grace for him. So he wants to take that from you. But he can't if you don't, if you, understand because the scripture says he has given us power and authority over all the works over to tread over scorpions and serpents and all the power of the enemy but we have to believe it we have great strength over him and he's Satan don't want us to come to our potential I always say that it's like he used our strength against us it's like we spoke about that I, I think last week, the week before that. It's like when you was talking about how like it's, it frightened the police to see people come, oh, the yeah. bloods and the crypts come together because yeah. they know if we drop sin, if Satan knows we drop sin, we gain our strength. Mm -hmm. And that makes them tremble mm -hmm. because now we're tapping into the higher power, the most high in Christ. Because now the power of Christ can flow through us and we can destroy and trample over all the works of the enemy and we can teach others. And that's the thing. Like, even like you got to understand this too. Now, when we do get into this, that's why a lot, a lot of people get distracted and discouraged because now the world is not accepting them because you got to understand and know when you had a spirit of Christ upon you and you walk up in the midst of sins, sinners, those demons are like, we got to get this away from us because they even triple it when you walk and your presence come in before them because you can say a few things and cause a person the light bulb to go off of and now you finna evict their demons you finna cast their demons out of them and they the, them spirits don't want that that's why you have cold shows from people or people acting funny around you or don't want to accept you this can like we have run this can be a lonely walk dealing with the heavenly father because we in this wilderness of the people, this yeah. wicked world, and it's getting wickeder and wickeder every day. So we have to remember that, and we got to keep 
the the um, whole armor of God on and keep pressing and keep pressing. And it, it, it can be difficult. It can be very difficult, especially when tragedies and hardships come upon us because like we, we said before on a prior um, stream, the this is a war. So now when we're when we go against the dark the darkness kingdom, they're they gonna come back. And Satan gonna try to cripple you. He is relentless. He gonna try to cripple you to the point to where you can't get back up. But we always can get back up. As long as we got breath in our body, the Heavenly Father, He's the scripture said He will put nothing on us that we cannot bear. So we have no need to be afraid of anything because anything that we face, we can bear it. And you have to believe that. But a lot of times, like I said, now the, the flip side is that now when you start going outside of like into sinful nature, you could that ain't the most the, the Satan will come and destroy you. Yeah, he will really he'll cripple you. If you don't he don't kill you, you probably ain't gonna even be able to be attach yourself back to the most high because you don't went so far off left field. That's why you can't play in this game because like anybody that know, like even if you want to go to the corner side, when you was blooded and cripping, if you a crip, you can't just decide that you want to be a blood. Cause now the people that you was with, now they going to be coming out and ready to kill you. This is, it's the same concept. You can't go from darkness, I mean from light and then try to go back to darkness. Say man, he don't want to accept you. He, 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 don't, he don't want to say, he, I, I'm not saying he may, he may, whatever. But still, understand it. no. There's this going to be consequences for the actions that you commit on this earth. That's why I say it's with, um, be hot or cold, mm-hmm. good or bad, because the Heavenly Father don't want to deal with you. If you're lukewarm, he spits you out of his mouth. He don't want to deal with you. The same thing with on the dark side. You got if you trying to deal with the heavenly father and, and going back and forth, Satan ain't gonna he's not gonna accept you like that. So you can't play around with this. You gotta make up your mind what you're gonna do. Serve the heavenly father or not. And that's the that's the choice that we have on this earth. So that's it, bro. Exactly, bro. I'm good. All right. Uh let's go to the book of Luke, uh, chapter 15. And uh, we're going to look at something here that, uh, that that Christ said. So Luke chapter 15, and then I want you to read verse 7. Luke 15 and verse 7. It says, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 90 and nine just persons, which need no repentance. Yeah, check that out, <laughs> right? <laughs> it says there's joy in heaven. Joy in heaven where the angels are, where the most high is. There's joy in heaven over one sinner just one that repenteth the one person that says you know what man i'm not gonna do no more wickedness man i'm gonna repent from my sins and i'm gonna follow the lord god through his son jesus christ and they really mean that and they start to do that there's joy in heaven the angels are rejoicing oh my god Michael, he's changed. Jane, she's changed. Whoever, they've repented. There's joy up in heaven when you make that decision. They're jumping and rejoicing. Right? When you make that decision. So this is what we got to understand. There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. Because if you think about it, if you look at the world, there's what billions of people on this earth, right? Most people are what? Doing their own damn thing. Most people don't give a damn about God. So here you go, you this one person decide, you know what, man? Out of the sincerity of your heart, say, you know what? I know I did foolishness. I know I messed up. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna repent. I'm gonna start following the Lord because that's what's right. You, right, out of billions of people, 
Of course there's going to be joy. Because most people turn their backsides to, to the Most High and the Son. Right? So that's what we got to keep in mind, right? There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. All right? All right, did you want to say anything on that? Or no? Nah, I'm good, bro. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. So let's see here. So 1 Timothy chapter 1, and then I want you to read verse... 15 and verse 16. This is the Apostle Paul uh, talking here, right? So I'll read that. 1 Timothy 1 and 15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exceptions that, Z I'm sorry, that Christ Jesus came unto the world to save sinners. Of whom I am chief. No, 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 no. Of whom I was chief. <laughs> am chief. Okay. So currently. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, listen, listen. When I read this, I, I mean, I had to go back. This is years ago when I first read it. I'm like, okay, did he just say am? Mm. How come he didn't say I was? Of who I was he says, I am. And then when you read his other books, all the stuff that he talks about that he struggles with, you know, the lasciviousness, the this I burn and this and that and the other, the stuff that he went through with um, people, how, you know, even when they try to kill him, throw him out of a wind, put him in prison, all kinds of stuff, accuse him of false stuff, so on and so forth. Right? So this is Paul saying, it says, uh, 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 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's what that was Christ's job of whom I am chief. Mm -hmm. He is a chief sinner. I love that humility, man, that that he had. I love it. Yeah. Right. That's and not to veer off too, but. It's like what you said earlier, bro. That's why, man, I always just, I always keep it humble, bro, because it's like, you don't, you know, I don't look at myself as some great person or this and that. No, forget all of that. Who cares? I look at myself like this man does. I, I, most I have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. Yeah. A lot of times when some really miraculous stuff be happening to me, and I'd be saying it to certain brothers and sisters, right, where I could have died. Mm -hmm. And the Most High showed great mercy to me, just like some biblical stuff, biblical something you read, like some miraculous stuff. The first thing out of my mouth, Lord, I did not deserve that, but thank you. I don't put myself in, oh, yeah, 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 thanks for me, yeah, I'm this, no, I'm a sinner. Thank you for your mercy, Lord, even though I did not deserve it. Thank you. And this is what we have to understand. It says, so this is what we all are, that this is Christ came to save sinners of who he was chief. Read on, bro. Verse 16 it says, how be it for this cause I ob obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering." For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Okay, so this is the thing, right? Check this out. It says, how be it for this cause I obtained mercy. So it's funny how um, this ties into what you were, one of the things you said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, when we were talking about, you know, just how some people go on and they just sin and sin. And there's the most I has a reason or whatever for everything. Because if you look at this man, if you look at Paul and the things that he were doing um, before he got converted, he was killing people, putting people to death that believed in Christ. Right. Yeah. And the most High didn't kill him or, or, or take him out. He showed him mercy, just like it says, I obtained mercy. And that was all for a reason. So that man did all that great wickedness and he obtained mercy. It says that in me first. Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. So this is an example of that long suffering 
that our Lord and Savior has towards us, no matter how sinful we may think we are, right? Or know that we are. It says, because this happened first in Paul, it says, for a pattern to them which should hereafter, so after him, believe on him to life everlasting. So we have Paul as an example to say, you know what? If the Most High showed him mercy and long suffering like that, then guess what? As long as I repent and uh, you know ask him for mercy and start living right, he can show that same mercy and long suffering to me as well. Mm-hmm. That's why that was. Yeah. All right. Did you want to say anything on that, or before we move on, or no? It's real quick because, like, that's one of the things how a lot of people, like, you have people that's murderers and killers and deceptive and just did great evilness. And those strongholds that the enemy have on their mind, they believe that it just ain't no hope for them. Right. But this is a great example because, like I said, Paul, he was killing the saints. He was killing people that believed in Christ because what he learned, there was false doctrine. He thinking he was doing the work of God, but he was actually doing the work of the devil. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people, and it's like a lot of our people, they are so lost. They grow up in the, the lifestyle and the cause that they're dealt. They just got to de- deal with what they got to deal with. A lot of people say, I got to do what I got to do. And they end up in a life of straight wickedness. But then they'll think that I, I, I heard a lot of people say, I ain't even going into the house of God. I ain't this, that, because they feel they're such sinners that they can't be accepted. And don't let the end, because the enemy will put you in that box and that trap and make you think that you got time. I, I deal with them later. I deal with them later. But like I said, the wages of sin are death. And Satan can come collect that soul, and then it's too late. But like like Paul, he what? The, he- the Christ showed up. Why are y'all kicking against Why you keep kicking against the pricks? Why you keep fighting God? Why you keep fighting the most high? It's the same thing that you need to examine. Why do you keep fighting the most? I, I haven't heard a lot of cats speak. They done got, they get examples and visions and, and, and um, they have testimonies that the Lord showed up and showed them things, but they don't be ready to let go of that life of sin. You That's why that's your opportunity to let go and turn to the Heavenly Father and be forgiven. And then your lifestyle and your tactic and the evil that you was in, it's a great testimony. And that's mm-hmm. another thing that the enemy yep. fur, because you got, uh, even though you was in wickedness, when you start understanding what your wickedness was and you see how the enemy trapped you up, your testimony is so great. And you can reach so many different people. Because for one, you can relate. Mm-hmm. See, it's, it's one thing about how like people try to get into this book and it's not saying, I'm not saying you should be a life sustainer, but you can have certain people that don't, ain't been through nothing trying to teach this book. And they just, just skimming through and think they got some knowledge, but they have no experience. It's just like a damn, I'm, I'm sorry for my leg. It's just like a person fresh out of college and, and they end up in the manager position. They got no experience and they trying to go in and run this company. But you got a person that been there. 20 years can run that company better than you. They got no education, but they got experience. So that's what it is. A lot of times we learn through what we go through. That's why the Heavenly Father, he came, like he said, like we just said, Christ came to this earth for sinners. And we just read Paul was the chief mm. of sinners. Mm. That's why he was one of the greatest, one of the greatest and one of the coldest because he had a lot of experience. And he can teach and relate. So that's what we want to be. We want to understand and be able to relate. Not look down our nose at people like just because I'm reading this, but like the brother said, he ain't looking at himself like he's somebody. And, and I'm not looking at myself like I'm somebody. I'm ready to relate. And it's a joy to to preach and teach the people to rec- help them to recover themselves from the snare of the devil. And when they get enlightenment and get taken away from the grips of Satan, because that's why the brothers read the scripture is rejoicing in heaven because it's like, Ooh, it's another soul saved and got snatched out of the hands of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. Because this earth is given unto the hand of the wicked and it's given unto Satan. Satan came and stole this earth from Adam and Eve. And he is the God of this earth and he got this earth. 
So every time there's a soul that gets snatched away from it, it's joy in heaven for that. And that's what we got to understand. And we de- we can escape, but you just got to submit yourself to the Heavenly Father's will. And that's it, bro. Exactly. All right, let's go to the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 2. And we're going to continue on here to see the great mercy and long suffering that the Most I have, right? Him and his, uh, and his son, who's our advocate. So, Revelations uh, chapter 2, and I want you to read from 19 through verse 22. So, what this is, right? This is uh, a letter, or these were, you know, letters that were being written to the different churches, and Christ was testifying, you know, of their works, what they were doing, what he saw, things that need to change, so on and so forth, right? So, I want y'all to pay attention to this. So, read Revelations chapter 2, read 19 through 22. Revelation 2 and 19 says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Stop for a second here. Okay, so Christ is saying, look, I know your works. I know your charity. That's a great thing that you have, the love towards one another, the service that you're doing towards the ministry, the faith, patience, work, so on and so forth. He knows all those things, right? But the point that I want to focus on here, it says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. So He's like, look, yeah, you you have good things, but there are some bad things that you're doing that I'm against, right? And then he says, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel. So there's a woman that was there calling herself Jezebel, which was a prophetess. It says, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Brother, is that a light thing? Mm -mm. No, it's not, bro. So she's teaching and seducing people to commit fornication. Not only that, they were eating things sacrificed unto idols. So these are like, again, not things that are light. These are like heavy things, right? Mm -hmm. But let's look at the long suffering, the patience, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. Let's read on. Let's look at the Lord's mercy and long suffering. Let's read 21 and 22. Verse 21 says, And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her unto, I'm sorry, with her unto great tribulations, except they repent of their deeds. Okay, so let's look at his mercy here in Long Suffering. It says, and I gave her space, so he gave her time to repent of that sin, and she repented not. So he didn't take her out, even though she was claiming to be a prophetess, and she knows the, the scriptures and this and that and the other, right? But yet and still, still doing wickedness, Right? The Lord gave her time to repent of her sins, but she didn't take it. And it says, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except... So you can see that, what? Another chance is still being given here, right? Because what these were what letters, right? So it says, except they repent of their deeds. So he still... What giving them a chance again to what get it right, right? Because all the scriptures that we read, he's not willing that any, any should should should, should die, right? But that all should come to life and repentance, right? So this is the thing that we got to understand. So again, as long as we're in the land of the living, we can see the sun, the moon. Guess what? We have a chance to get it right. Because even when you look at this example here, it's like, look, if she don't repent, then that's when I'm going to kill her. And after that point, oh, that's it. 
It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So that's it for her. But as long as we're in the land of the living, he's given us a chance to get it right. And that's the point of me reading the scripture here. Right? Did you want to say anything on that? No, I'm good, bro. Okay. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 11. And we're going to look to see here, right? Um, so this is who we should look to. And obviously we, we've been alluding to it the whole class. But this is who we need to look to and follow as an example. Not another man, you know, not our own minds, you know, things like that. But this is whom, whom we need to look to, to you know, to, to, to be right uh, in the eyes of the Father, right? And to get right. So read Matthew 11, uh, 28 through 30. You're muted. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Matthew 11, 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give the, you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest into your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay. So it says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Right? So Christ is saying, this is Christ talking. And he's saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden with sins. And I will give you that rest, man. I will give you that rest, that rest that you're looking for, right? Not the, the burdens of the world, or our own minds, our own sins. He will give us that, that rest. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So walk in unison, right, with Christ and learn of him. Read your, read your scriptures, He's all throughout the scriptures, right? But read your scriptures. You know, if you want to start with again with the New Testament, fine, right? But just pay attention to, you know, the things that Christ taught, just how he lived when people came at him, the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, how he didn't, you know, um, go back and forth with them. He didn't, wasn't involved in adultery, fornication, even though there were like many women around him. You know, so on and so forth. Just pay attention to those things and listen to the things that he told us to do, right? And it's an ever-learning experience. It doesn't stop, right? So it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn about that man. Learn about Christ. It says, for I am meek, right? So he followed what the Most High commanded, right? That's that meekness. And lowly in heart. He's very humble, man. You read things like he would heal people and he would say, look, don't tell anybody that it's me that did it. Lowly, he didn't try to take any glory for himself. A man came to him and says, good master, what good things shall I do to inherit eternal life? The first thing he said, look, why are you calling me good? There's only one good and that's God. So that very lowly in heart, he was just very, very humble. No pride at all. Right. So these are the things we, we have to learn of. Right. And just meditate on these things. Pray to the Lord and just ask him for guidance, man. Ask him to help us to develop and get the same mind and spirit that our Lord and Savior had when he was on earth. I know that's something that I pray for. Mm -hmm. You understand? So have that same mind and spirit that our Lord and Savior had. So what we can walk through this wicked world. Right. And just learn to offend less and less. Right. Study your scriptures, man. Uh, you know, listen to Bible lessons so on, and just just learn. Just do the things that are right. Mm -hmm. It says, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Right. Not like when you're living in wickedness, because a lot of contrary to, um, you know, what they try to put out there. When you're living in wickedness, you your mind be racing to all kinds. You just. You, you're not you're not resting. You know that, okay, most people know that, okay, just something is, isn't right about how I'm living. Mm -hmm. Right? It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So 
uh, the things that he was doing is not a hard thing, uh, but our minds is what makes it hard. Right. So for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what Christ is telling us. Okay. Did you want to say anything on that before we move on? So I'll say something real quick on the, the latter part where it says, well, you should find rest into your soul. Because, like, what you going into a little more, because it's the, um, like, when we see this world for what it is and we understand, because that's what Christ came to give us. He came to give us the security. He came to take away the fear. And he'll take away the fear of the unknown. Because a lot of things that's going on in this world right now, people just shook and don't know what's going on. So now your soul is uneasy. You're not at rest. It's 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 just a doubt. And so a lot of people turn to drugs and alcohol and all those different things to try to drown out the pain that they got inside. But the Heavenly Father in Christ gives us that rest and assurance. Because when we understand and know, because people see the, the tragedies and the, what the world is coming to. And it makes you unsure, the unsettledness, and all that stuff. But when you understand the scriptures, and you know that Christ uh, will keep you safe even in famine, He will keep you fed. He will keep you, like He said, He will. Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you believe and have that faith, it says you should find rest into your soul. And that's why it says, "For my yoke is easy and my burden is light." It becomes very easy when we follow his ways, and it becomes very light when we begin the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. But if we're fighting and we're rejecting, his burden is very heavy because we're trying to walk in the flesh and do spiritual things. And the flesh and the spirit are going to always combat one another. Because if you feed in your flesh, the spiritual things are going to be very ignorant and very unknown and very heavy and difficult for you to complete because the scripture tells you about how the um the righteousness of god is foolishness until people that they don't know i, I got butchered there but it's the understanding of the scriptures is it's like foolishness it's it's like they don't get it they don't understand it because it's spiritually discerned you gotta be had a spirit the holy spirit to understand what the heavenly father has um is delivering this book and no man can really teach you like we can plant the seed we can show you but the understanding come from the most high christ he is the one that gives you the enlightenment and the understanding it's something that happens in your spirit and causes you to understand i can teach you i can show you yes i can give you understanding to, to look out for this and look out for that but if you don't apply those things to your life, it's not going to it's not going to happen. It's it just your understanding is not going to be there because your fruits won't grow because you're not nurturing and you're not uh, taking care and causing your fruits to grow through the um, o- obedience because that's the o- obedience is what causes our understanding and knowledge to grow. So that's it, bro. Exactly. Good. All right, so let's go to the book of Psalm 73, and we'll end it here. So let's see here. Psalms chapter 73, and read verse 24 through verse 28. Psalm 73 and 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fell it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, that they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a horn from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy words. Okay, check this out, right? It says, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Right? 
So thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Right? So you can look at this lesson as a part of that counsel. Look at what's written in the scriptures as a part of that counsel to what? Guide you back to the heavenly father. And afterward receive me to glory. Right? It says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? So who do we have in heaven that's looking out for us, right? The great, merciful, full of compassion, long-suffering, who, contrary to what Satan puts in our mind, doesn't get angry at the drop of a hat and is ready to destroy us, right, for every little wrong that we do, right? Who do we have in heaven but thee? Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. This is how we have to be, man, because there's only one person that has our back. And that's the one who made us, the Most High God and his only begotten son, who's our advocate. So two people, right? There is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. This is how we should be. We should have that desire to what? Have the heavenly father and his son in our corner at all times, right? Because they're all powerful. They're, they're, very, they're full of mercy and compassion. It's not like man, right? We, we do something and a person is ready to like throw you off the cliff. I know I've been in situations like that plenty of times. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, bro, chill. Good God. And I always say, you know what, man, Mosai, thank you for being in charge. Because if it was one of us that are in charge, guess what? No one would be left on the planet. Right? That's how not long suffering we are. But the Mosai God is. So whom, I, whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Even when you look at that, the example of Paul, when you're reading some of his letters, he's like, look, I would much rather depart and be with Christ. But, you know, that's not, it's, right now that's not convenient. It's convenient that I'm here and teaching you guys, so on and so forth. So what, you see even in, in him, he had that desire to what? Be with the Lord. That's how we should be, right? And not be caught up in the world and wickedness and Satan because he's the God of this world. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So even in our weak moments, God is our strength. And my portion forever. He's the one that's looking out for us. That's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to eternal life. He's the strength of our heart. For lo, they are far from thee. Excuse me. They that are far from thee shall perish. So the ones who are not drawing nigh are close to the heavenly father, they're going to perish. Thou has destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. So all the ones that say, you don't want to forget God, this and that and the other, after he done gave them thousands of chances. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you know what? You're not going to change then after the land of the, the spirit world is where you go. Thou has destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. It says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. It's a very good thing to what draw near to God by what following him, following the examples of his son, doing what's right, because he's going to be in our corner and he's going to be the one to be merciful to us at all times and not men. Because if it's up to men, we would be dead. 
Because men are very unmerciful. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy work. So I have put my trust in the Lord God, right? So what? We can say, you know what? God did this for me. He did that for me, so on and so forth. When I thought I would almost die, he brought me back from death and he showed me great mercy and he did this for me and did that for me, so on and so forth. That's what it's all about, right? So getting right with the Lord. Praise. All right. Giving all praises, brother. Did you have anything you want to say in closing or no? I'll close with this real quick with the um, verse in verse 25 when it says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. And that's the level and understanding that we need to truly come to because once you begin to see the world for what it is, once the spirit is within you, you begin to see the worthlessness that this world offers. And you don't desire the cares and the lust in the flesh of this world. And it don't entrap you and ensnare you because that's what the enemy is doing. You have everybody that's caught up in all the glitz and glamour and the fame and the fortune and the rich people and the, all the stuff that's going on, they desire all these worldly carnal things. But we have to get to the understanding that this world is going to be destroyed. And it's, every, it's not, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this, you can have things, you can have good things, but your desire and where your heart is, like the scripture says, is where your treasure is going to be. So if your heart is and your mind is focused on this world, on this world and trying to gather riches to yourself in this world, a lot of riches can destroy your relationship with the Heavenly Father because a lot of sinful nature and acts come within that. And when you see it for what it is through the eyes of the Spirit, then you won't desire those things. It, it won't be so ent entertaining to you because you have this world is just, oh my God, they caught up in the next new thing. And like we always say, they're going after our kids and all these different things. The desire of this earth is it, it, really nothing. And it's crazy. Like, I, I heard Mike Epps sound like he got a little sense in his, in his head, like, about he was really said that he don't do the things that a lot of the rich people do to get money. Because he was like, when you think about it, all you can do is buy more cars, buy more houses. And he was like, in the end, it's like, it's nothing that you can really, nothing that you can really do with money. Like, <laughs> he pretty much said, ain't, ain't nothing you can really do, but buy stuff and gain stuff to you. It, 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 yes, but the scripture says it's a tool to get you through the right, because we're in this system to where we need money. But if we were following God, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really, if the, the Heavenly Father was ruling this earth, you, you wouldn't need money. Money wouldn't be a factor because we'll have our own. We'll, we'll know how to um, provide for ourselves. But that's the structure under Satan's kingdom that we're in. So that desire, we got to understand and know that desire has to be to the Heavenly Father. Seek those things that are above. That's what the scripture says. Let your heart and desire be to the most high. And he'll lead you and show you and guide you to him. And that's it, bro. Okay, bro. Good. Giving all praises. All right. So, you know, we say all praises uh, to the heavenly father through his only begotten son for giving us again another chance and opportunity to come and go over his word. And um, hopefully it was edifying to people. And again, if you want to contact us, um, the phone number is 888-971-2622. You can email us at info at the .com. And again, to check out all of our learning resources, check out our link tree. It's link, L-I-N-K dot T-R-E-E, -E, I think with two E's, <laughs> dot com forward slash the B-O-C-C. And um, yeah, that will give uh, give you all of our uh, learning resources that we have online. Okay, so with that, we say have a good night. <laughs>